All yeah. right. Thank you. Uh, so good morning, all. Um, at the outset, I would really like to thank uh, AIUS Chairman Scientific Committee for giving us this opportunity. So with this morning cup of tea, we would like to have uh, a revision course in glaucoma. And my topic for today is Goldman Applanation Tonometry. So there's no financial disclosure. So why GAT? Goldman Applanation Tonometer. So as you know, the IOP is the only modifiable risk factor and GAT is still is the gold standard. It works on a modified Imbert fixed principle where pressure is equal to force applied by area. And when the prism diameter is 3.06 mm, it cancels all other forces except the important forces which we are considering here. So these are the important parts of the Goldman Applanation Tonometer. On the top, there's a biprism. Then you have a housing and you have a revolving knob to measure the pressure. So most importantly, what would be the slit lamp settings? So our slit lamp should be on the highest illumination, low magnification, the cobalt blue filter should be on and the angle between illumination arm and the eyepiece should be around 40 to 60 degree. And what are the patient's factor? We have to make sure that patient is relaxed and comfortable and there should be no breath holding and if at all any necktie or anything is there, we have to loosen it. Now about the procedure as such, so we have to explain the procedure to the patient. We have to tell them that it is safe and painless. A drop of topical anesthetics is put into the lower cul-de-sac. Stain the tear film with fluorescein strip. Wipe off excess of the tear. The proper positioning is very important. So we have to make sure that the chin rest, head rest, and the lateral canthi alignment on the slit lamp, they all should be at proper place. So, so this is how we take it. So the, the prism should actually touch the central cornea. And when we touch this, this is how the prism should actually put onto the central cornea, only touch it, not press to too much. So this is our uh, the, 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 the zero point where we have to catch the pressure. So the two semicircle, the inner margin of them should be touching each other, just touching each other. These are the incorrect positions. And to make it correct, we have to either move the joystick up or down, left or right, or the pressure measuring knob, we have to go forward or come back so as to align it correctly as in this picture. So some important tips while taking this pressure is important. Like we have to wipe off excess of tear and stain with the help of cotton or tissue paper. If at all, there is a need to separate the eyelid to put the biprism properly onto the cornea, we have to separate the eyelid with our index finger and thumb. But mind you, we have to press over the orbital rim and not on the globe. Now, when, when we want to take this IOP, we have to slide the slit lamp by looking from the sideway till it reaches near the cornea. And then one has to switch to the eyepiece. Touch the cornea gently with only forward tilt of the joystick. So as with any procedure, this, this procedure, though it is gold standard, it has some contraindication and limitations. So one should not do it on open globe injury or any kind of injury or corneal ulcer and infection cases. Again, this cannot be taken on a supine position. 
and patient where you have irregular cornea, corneal scar or opacity, and also over contact lenses. Now, we, we must know also about the errors, and the most important about, of, of them are corneal thickness. So when you have a thin cornea, this actually underestimates, and when it has a thick cornea, it overestimates the IOP. When the astigmatism is more than three or four diopter, then in case of with the rule astigmatism, it underestimates the IOP. And against the rule astigmatism, it actually overestimates. Now, if you have a lot of tear film and stain, you will have a thick mire and it will actually overestimate the IOP, where in case you have a very thin mire, it will actually underestimate. So in case you have a thick mire, you have to wipe up excess of the stain or tear film. And if I have a thin mire, what you can do, you can ask the patient to blink a couple of time and again recheck. If not, you can also put a little more of fluorescein strain into the eye. Now, the antisepsis part of the pie prism is very important. And the most common and convenient of them is alcohol wipes. But one can alternatively use 3% hydrogen peroxide and also 70% isopropyl alcohol. Mind you, when, when, once we do it, we have to let it dry for at least a couple of minutes. Otherwise, it can cause corneal damage. Now, calibration is also very, very important. And we have to do every month or every alternate month. Otherwise, there's a chance of palsy result. So the calibration rod and reference block, it is actually provided with the machine. How we do it? So we have to check the rod. There are five markings on the rod. Central is zero. On either side, it's 20 millimeter of mercury. And farther ahead, on either side, it is 60 millimeter of mercury. So what we do with a small video, I would like to explain this. So this is the calibration rod. And these are the 60 millimeter marking and 20 minute marking. So this reference block is actually set here. It is with the 20 millimeter of mercury. And that is how it is actually put into the box. And then you see when it is moving on the two mark, it is actually, you just see the prism, it will move back. So when it is, the calibration should be such that it should not go beyond the one mark. So so this is actually two corresponds to 20, one corresponds to 10. So it should be actually lie between 18 and 22. So if that is so, the calibration is good. If it is going beyond 18 or 22, the calibration is not good. And we have to send this to the service people who will do it from their end. So my take home message would be, before taking this IOP, we have to have a comfortable positioning of the patient and doctor. The procedure should be explained well to the patient. We must not do it into the infective cases or in the injury cases. And a periodic calibration of the Goldman Applanation Tonometer is a must to have an accurate result. 